Hello there reason people, Pooper here and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to actually look at how we can record using the advanced MIDI device. So we're going to pull data in via this and actually record it in the sequencer. Now, obviously the advanced MIDI device has been around since reason one and around about reason three, we got the remotes and without a doubt, if you've seen some of my other videos, especially about using reason live, I would do everything using remotes. So I'd actually bring it in and do the remotes inside, mainly because you can switch between instruments really, really quickly. When you switch in between MIDI channels, it's a little bit slower and you've got to be careful about hung notes and all sorts of other things going on with it. But obviously it's a possibility. So what's actually happened is someone's actually come along and they want to obviously um, pull some data in from a, a keyboard, which is going to cost multiple MIDI channels. And as I say, the method I would use, um, yeah, there's a little bit of a setup to it. So there's less of a setup doing it this way, but there's still obviously a couple of gotchas and you still have to set up a few little things. But I thought, hey, let's go through this and I can show you how to do it. So the first thing I'm just actually gonna do, let's see if I can pull this up large. Hey, there we go. So first thing I need is to obviously to get my MIDI port. As you can see, I've got quite a few set up. So that's actually my bit of hardware. So I'm just gonna click on that. And what I've got plugged into here is my good old Korg. Let's get rid of that and I was going to grab, it doesn't matter what instrument you happen to grab, I just happen to be getting the ID8. So now at the moment, if I was to actually play my keyboard, you can't hear anything, which is great. But if you actually look here, you can see the MIDI channel. So it's actually is talking and going, hey, I am here. So if I was now to push this onto, to point at this particular one and I push play now, you can hear it playing. Now, obviously the, the issue was the simple case that if we come down here and look at the sequencer, we can see the sequence is armed, everything's armed, everything looks really, really good. And if I was to hit record and play, nothing's recorded. This has always been the issue. So you go find the remote so you can get it, things recorded. However, we can really fix this really, 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 really quickly. I can grab any player I want. It doesn't matter which player, I was going to grab a player, put it on top, turn it off. There we go. In fact, I'm even going to collapse it down so you don't even have to look at it. And I'm going to turn direct record on. Now, at the moment, things are going to work if I hit record. And as you can see, We've recorded, no problem at all. So that's actually fantastic and it seems really, really straightforward. But as I said, there is actually a couple of gotchas. Um, and the gotchas are, well, let's just go through them and let's just quickly, in fact, I could actually, uh, if I grab this, let me see, if I grab all of this and grab this down here, he says he, he missed it, hit my control key, we should be able to make a copy of that. Again, I'm gonna make a copy of that. And I'm gonna make another copy of that. There we go, so I've got a few copies. If we actually come down, you can instantly see, let me just delete that out because we don't want this uh, bit of data here. The issue you can see really is, well, none of these are armed. So even though copy three now has got the focus, I my normal MIDI focus, uh, my internal keyboards, and it's that's armed, but obviously I'm pointing up this top one. So this time when I hit record, nothing's going, to rec nothing's going to record. So we've got to be able to get these armed. And obviously me clicking on this now, you might go, oh look, it's worked. It's, yeah, but now these are all disarmed. So if I was wanting to put in, say four separate channels, you're not quite doing it. It's, or it's going to fail, basically. So I've actually got, and I'm gonna probably mute this right out because I'm using my Korg, my T1, and I haven't programmed that for donkey's years. So I found an old disc back from 91 and I've got some kind of sequence data on it, but it's all gonna be out of whack because obviously the drums were designed for that particular keyboard and all the rest of it. So when I bring it in, it's gonna be totally out of whack. So I thought I can record that in here because it's obviously it's multiple tracks which are coming in and we'll see how we can actually get the data in rather than what the data sounds like. So we are gonna need a player on each device. And it doesn't matter what the devices are. So I could even clap these down. These could be any device you want. 
but we also need to be able to get these armed. And the way to get them armed is, I'm lucky enough that obviously I've got all these devices um, set up, all these controllers. Now, I know for a fact that some of these controllers, oh, it's probably a little bit small on the screen, I've got nothing coming into them at the moment. But as soon as I, I set it to a controller, I, I lock it, you can see it suddenly becomes enabled. So if I was to grab that next one and come down here and go, hey, I'm gonna push it to that one there. Hey, it's become enabled, it's come enabled. And again, it's come enabled. Let's do the, one more. Hey, so we got them all. Um, and that now, theoretically, I should be able to record uh, stuff out of my Korg um, onto four channels. Uh, I've just got to go and check something on my actual Korg very, very quickly, like, um, I don't know, my MIDI channels. Oh God, I don't know how to work this thing. And, oh, that's lovely, one, two, three, four. Ah, brilliant. So just going to one, two, three, four. So at the top here, that's my IDE one, copy, so let's have a copy. And then here's another copy, yeah. And then we've got another copy. I don't know, I don't know if I've got four, or I don't know how many, let's see. It looks like I've got four tracks, but something doesn't look quite right, but who cares? So now theoretically, I'm gonna hit record down here in Reason, press, uh, in fact, let's just stop that and get that right back to the beginning. I'm gonna press start on my sequencer. Obviously a, a drum track somewhere. Oh, that's a drum track, isn't it? You get, the mess, you get the idea, we've got loads of stuff coming in, four different tracks, and it's all recorded, absolutely fine. So how can you get to lock these, I suppose, get them extra instruments and lock them in? If I pull up, let me go back over to this screen here and pull up my preferences, hey, there we go. Um, and we go under our MIDI stuff. Now, there's nothing stopping you um, if you've got one spare MIDI controller, you can map it out multiple times. So I've got like MIDI ports and I can actually map them out multiple times. So I get like this, you get this little triangle and if you actually click on it, it tells you that this service controller is using the same MIDI port. So you can actually use the same MIDI port to loads of different controllers. So you could just name them like dummy one, dummy two, dummy three, and just use the same port. And you're only gonna use it to lock it because you're not actually pumping any MIDI data in. We're just using it so we can arm our channels and then we can record via whatever channel we're on into our sequencer. And then once you finish with it, I would advise you either to, to delete them or you just, you know, you can unclick them and say, hey, I, I can use it another day. So like on this particular one here, if we actually click on that and then click on edit, it's come up with, oh, you can see it's, it's come up very, very small. Let's see if I can drag this over onto my zoomed in bit. Oh, there we go, it's zoomed in. And so you can see the port I'm using here, which is called a loop MIDI port. So there's nothing actually stop at the moment. If I just do a cancel on that, coming along here, clicking on the add manual. Again, it's opened up on the other screen. So let me quickly go and grab that across. And then from here, I can just literally set up exactly the same thing. Uh, and it's, let's say, MIDI controller with keyboard. It doesn't matter if it's got no controls or controls. It doesn't really matter which one you're going for. But here, I, this is where I can set up the, exactly the same port, which I think I had set for my loop MIDI. So I'm gonna select that. Obviously, I'm not going to select this port. I'm not gonna put this port in here because if not, you're gonna start confusing things because you, you will end up pumping MIDI data, data down here. You've got to remember what Reason's going to do is if you've got a keyboard which is talking out on um, your four, five, six, seven, eight channels, whatever many channels you've got running, it'll actually condense them all down into one. So if you, even though you've got this set up once, it'll just pass it all in. You don't want that. So you want to use something which you're not currently using. So if I was to set that up again and say, I'm gonna use my loop MIDI, click on okay, it's gonna go off, it's gonna set a new one up. In fact, is, is that done that or is that the old one? Nope, here we go, there it is. So sometimes it can just be a bit slow. So just put it right at the end. So my top one, that, that's, my, that's my normal one. 
and sorry, my new one's right at the very bottom, so here, here it is. But as I said, it gives you that little exclamation mark. Don't worry about it. I can now use that to lock, to allow me to record. So you've got to lock to be able to record. You've got to be able to lock to enable the recording. You've then got to obviously have the player, which is in, in the uh, direct record mode, which will allow you to do it. Sorry if that bit's sounding a little bit waffly, but that's the only gotcha you've, you've got to play around with using this particular method. If you just want to bring one channel in at a time, well, it's no problem. You've probably got a MIDI control already set up. So just by giving it the MIDI focus, you're probably fine. That's going to be absolutely fine. As you notice at the very beginning, I didn't have to lock anything because I've got a keyboard already set up. And because I've got a keyboard set up, Reason is going to say, well, yeah, that's got the MIDI focus. So I can obviously arm that track. So that's all that's all about. Hope that sort of clarifies things. Um, and I hope I didn't make things too confusing because of that silly little um, having to do the, the locking so you can enable. All right, so all I can say is uh, thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.